Uh, in terms of uh, cost, how much does it cost to build your to build the mine, uh, your hidden mine, and compared to a regular, you know, heater? Yeah, so I'm actually still using the water normal water heater. I still use to store the hot water. It's just that the heating coil or the gas burner is disabled, um, and so right now you're looking at around costs of like a thousand us dollars which is the minor so an s9 i using a single s9 right now that that is sufficient to just heat um a 20 uh, i think it's a 40 gallon so like 120 liter water tank um that is the cost of the minor is around three to four hundred dollars um and then you need to uh we need to you need to get the liquid um, because it's a specific oil that is specialized for uh, minor immersion cooling. That's and again depends on how how much you need, two to three hundred dollars, and then all kind of parts and things like that. So, if you think around a thousand dollars, that's a good um, number. You can go quite far with that. But of course, okay. my hope is also that this comes down over time. That um, I'm working on auto and I'm making it simpler. And maybe like if a company actually would be interested in doing that, um, yeah, maybe we, we could reduce the costs um, a bit more. So, uh, so a follow-up question would be, uh, you mentioned uh, S using S9s to attach it to the heater. W would it only work with S9s or other, you know, big combining gear uh, equipment? It does work with literally anything. Um, you could even put your hair dryer in it and it would heat the water. Like it doesn't, anything that generates heat um works what I, i'm using s9s right now specifically because of the brain software uh, so the brains firmware which is an aftermarket firmware that you can install on some miners not all of them allows you to get a bit more data from the miner so i know exactly the temperature and also and it allows you also to control it a bit more now i don't think this is going to be necessary in the future but right now it's literally a proof of concept and I'm looking at like graphs every single day to see like where the water is, how hot the miner was to just learn more about the system that we then could use this also for other miners as well. But from a physical point of view, anything that generates heat will be able to heat your water. What about if you're like in a tropical place and like heat is something that you're trying to get rid of? Is there like a way to convert that into like air conditioning? Good question. Yes, there is. Physically, that's possible. Um, in my Airstream, actually, there's a fridge and it runs on propane. So there, it's called absorption chilling. And it, it basically is able to convert heat into cool, uh, either hot air or hot water. And um, also, if you go to a much bigger scale, like I used to work like in data centers, and some of them actually have absorption chillers outside. So what they do, they take the hot heat that comes out of the data center, they run through absorption chillers, but they're like size of like shipping containers. And on the other side comes out cool water and they use the cool water again to feed it back into the, into the climate control system of the data center. So there is ways, I haven't found anything that really would be like on, an, on a residential scale. Um, I don't think everybody having like a shipping container in their backyard wouldn't be a real thing. Um, but I do think that this should be able to be to be done because it's done in RVs, like it, it, it exists. I just think the problem is in the past, we no, never really had waste heat in residential areas. Like that's not a thing that usually a house generates waste heat. With the miners now, suddenly we have a lot of waste heat. And so I do think that there's actually gonna be a whole industry coming up for these um, waste heat reusing systems either in cool or, I mean, maybe there's some other things you could do with it um, that you can install in your house. So it's, it's definitely something I'm gonna look into um, and I'm gonna figure out how we could do that because that would be, of course, the dream that in the future, you just have a miner or two or three at your house. It generates hot air or hot water and you can run, your fridge uses it, your, your hot water heater uses it. You have a pool or you plumb it in there as well. And if you need to cool, you can also do that. Um, so I, I do think it should be possible in some way or another. Uh, when it comes to, 
utilizing waste heat man the people we need to speak to here are the people who have legally grown weed for the last like you know a couple of decades <laughs> they're gonna know man they're gonna, they're gonna have I've ideas seen- I've seen greenhouses that are run by miners, so I've seen some pictures. So yeah, they they must know, right? Like, because I, I know there's obviously that thing about the lighting and stuff that you're generating too much heat and stuff. So they got to know a good way to 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 utilize that. I'm sure. But I, I think like a something I'm interested in as well is obviously before the wall heater, you spoke about the first thing, which was the RV, right? Um, yeah. And for those who don't know, it was like a it's one of those um, classic like metal uh, like pill bullet train looking kind of things there's classic american ones for anyone who is listening um and what you had was a box outside uh venting through and it had the it, so it's like kind of going going inside of that and so the air vent is going in so i guess the questions there are when it comes to you need some kind of internet connection not much of an internet connection when it comes to mining as far as i'm aware um probably could run it on dial up i think but um, i'm not an expert yep. um but so did you have like a hotspot going or how did you have the internet situation sorted out for that because i assume you're running it 24 7 most of the time by the sounds of it uh, is the yes. first question and then uh second question oh, i can't remember the second question we'll just go with the first question i had two All questions right. but i can't remember so it really depends where you are. Um, some um, RV parks have um, have Wi-Fi, so you just connect to them. Um, I then have like a little router that connects to the Wi-Fi because the miner itself doesn't have Wi-Fi, so that just converts Ethernet to Wi-Fi. Um, but as I'm like, while we were living in the airstreams, um, we actually always had like um, little uh, cellular routers um, to to connect to it. Uh, what I haven't looked at is like. Um, is actually like satellite. So like Blockstream has this whole satellite system that you could actually, um, you can only download, but you can like download the block um, or the blockchain from Bitcoin through satellite. So you would need less, you only need, um, uh, you need to send or you need to communicate with the pool um, through upstream. But of course, I mean, uh, Starlink, will probably be the, the last solution we're going to have. It's just like to have a Starlink satellite and then, or a dish, and then you can literally mine wherever you want. So like Sweet. you say, it's it's not a lot of bandwidth you need. So even super small, super um, weak internet is enough. I actually follow this guy that's like a Linux YouTuber and he um, broadcasts from a Starlink that he has on an RV. Yeah, it, I mean, you have a 200 megabits with Starlink, so... Yeah, the problem is solved, and it's globally. So even if you are somewhere where nobody can find you, you're gonna be able to mine there. Yeah, I can see in the in the future, like I, I know now it's possible, but I can see like five years time, maybe slightly longer, where it becomes really normal to like just be like, hey, I just pay. So what I'm imagining in the future is that you're just gonna pay some fee of mu- some of money, and that will get you your internet everywhere no matter where you are at any time whether it's at home whatever uh, i imagine that's where we're going whether it's 5g or something whatever it's going to be um so i guess and, I, and to me i feel like the kinds of people who spend a lot of time in rvs are usually bucking the trend somehow in life like they you know, if you're if you're living <laughs> if you're living in a truck or an rv or something you, you're probably willing to not go the normal route right like so i feel like those kinds of people are usually more open to the idea of okay well shit instead of using propane or whatever i can heat my truck and mine bitcoin even if i don't know what bitcoin is much i know that it's some kind of money so it's like if i'm going to pay you know similar cost to heat my truck or it's you know or even easier because you have to go find propane all the damn time um if it this is i think this is the key to hit on is like if it when it comes to bitcoin and people like if you can make it easier for them to utilize like bitcoin solution or they can do the same cost or cheaper and make some money back then they're probably going to be pretty incentivized to go ahead totally um so that self screams is like a really cool idea as well as like someone commercializing that or or even just having like um like a how-to guide around like okay you buy two miners you shove it in this box you want to waterproof it this way and then i I guess it's like we could we could have ideas around that and how people can can set that up i guess um even to the point of okay and you can buy this cellular um what they called whatever they're called uh and then that can like pull in internet and you can pay this fee amount or whatever so yeah. I think there's quite a lot of interesting stuff to be had around that um especially because someone who can who can pay for a monthly fee for internet anywhere can then use it also for their internet use anyway so they're not wasting money yep. on it and yep. there's all sorts of recycling possibilities there um so yeah i think it's quite interesting um michael you mentioned you're using s9s but like do you get like more efficiency if you use like an s19 or something 
You would, yes. So an S19 right now is profitable. Um, while an S9, if you if you run it just for the mining, like you would lose like two to three dollars a day right now with the Bitcoin price. Uh, the thing is, just like an S19 costs you like eight thousand dollars minimum to buy, while an S9, I mean, if you're lucky, you maybe find one for two hundred dollars uh, on like Facebook Marketplace. So, um, and. So that was the biggest reason that I have an S9 is like, I'm really interested in how can we use something that otherwise wouldn't be usable? Because if you have an S19, if you pay $8,000 and it's profitable, you want to run this 24 seven. My system just only runs a couple of hours per day. And so it's really not there to be as most efficient. So if you have an S19, you're going to want to run this all the time. And so that's why I, well, A, I had an S9 just lying around, and B, um, I think it's actually much better to use these because, I mean, at least right now, so um, like if anybody is interested um, in doing this, buy the S9s right now because you literally find them like for super, super cheap, um, saying like $100, $200, $300 a piece. Um, if the price is going to go up of Bitcoin, yeah, they're going to be much more worth uh, very fast. And so... Um, it's just simpler and cheaper to use an S9, but you can use anything you want. It will be possible, yeah. Assuming that you wanted to build, like uh, like you said, you, imagine you wanted to commercialize a product and um, for people to use, uh, would you, you know, specialize only for S9s or would you keep people the options of having to use, you know, S19s and, you know, other mining, other machines? I could imagine that we have different like levels. So basically, if you're just if you if you want to mine at home and you only want to run a water heater, we I will probably suggest you an S9 or maybe two of them. Um, but if you have more usage for hot water, which could, let's say you have a pool outside and um, that you want to heat as well, or you have a really big house, or we go like into the, in the start industrial, like I, I I'm not a pro in this at all, but I can imagine like a hospital. They're going to have huge freaking water heaters there that run um, water, hot water. So, or you're a commercial swimming pool or um, a hotel. And so then if you then can run something again for 24 hours, you would totally put an S19 in there again. Like that's, that then makes more sense. So it's really about how long will the miner run every single day and um, how much you're going to pay for the miner and at which point you're gonna have a break even off the whole system. Um, but for home mining right now, I'm right now I'm using one S9 and I think um, I could, I'm gonna play with two or three of them just to see how it behaves uh, and uh, changes a bit. And I think there's a, so obviously beyond it being cool and beyond it being just awesome to, you know, make some money whilst heating your house or your RV or whatever, in my eyes, like from the uh, idealist standpoint, there's been a lot of like different uh, battles uh, with Bitcoin, like the block size wars, all these different things. And um, especially when speaking to, was it Compass or uh, we've spoken to many mining companies, but whichever one it was um, that was saying about uh, energy companies being able to mine and, 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 and obviously the different various like big mining groups and companies that, that do it. Um, and there was the censorship um, situation where like blocks were getting censored. And yes. I can kind of, and, and then you've also got things like, okay, so the FATF has this like new travel rule, which they're bringing in for and I can see this sort of turning into, well, you know, like if, if your Bitcoin wasn't, you know, um, abiding by this or that, then it's not really acceptable Bitcoin for any exchange or any business legally in this country, in that country. I can see all this kind of crap starting to appear. Yep. Um, and it's probably only going to get worse realistically. So I think it's the dream here is it's almost like we're again starting another situation where it's like the little people get to fight against yeah. the big companies. Cause it's like, Hey, if, if, if you've got an opportunity to buy for your RV or for your water heater, for your house or whatever it is, or if you're going to try and make it into an air conditioning unit um, and people just a simple, you know, mum or dad down the road can just go, okay. And buy it and someone can install it. And then it's, you know, going to, going to actually make them or save them money. They'll probably be doing it. And also they'll be helping in a situation potentially where, we can kind of 
battle back really and say, well, actually, no, like this is our Bitcoin, like it's yeah. the people's Bitcoin, yes. not yours. This seven companies that are all following X, Y, Z legislations and hiding miners underneath of uh, floorboards in New York and things like that. So I think it really kind of, I, I'm super interested, especially because of that very reason, like there's a lot of crap going on and I can really see things going worse and worse right now. So um, yeah, I just think it's awesome, dude, like, from, from that perspective. Like, is that, is that, it must be something that's come to mind for you. Like, is that something that's worried you a, a little bit? I mean, it, this was not the reason, but the more I looked into mining, yeah, I mean, I realized that in the end, it's only the miner that decides which of the blocks are added to the transaction. Right now, there's a game theory that it makes of course sense for the miner to decide, okay, I'm going to add the blocks, I'm going to add the transactions with the highest fees because this gives me money. But as a miner, I could decide to basically sanction one specific UTXO or an address. Um, and if I don't like this one, I'm not going to add it to my block. And if there's enough miners that do this together, um, yeah, they could make it really hard for anybody to transact Bitcoin. Now, of course, right now, we hope that this never is going to happen. But let's imagine NATO actually figures out how the mining stuff works. And they say, OK, we're like all the NATO um, members, all their, their companies that mine that are stock listed, they need to now use this API. And, um, and if we decide that this specific address cannot mine anymore, uh, cannot be used for transacting anymore, um, it, they can make it really, really hard for anybody to, that is um, blocked to actually transact something. And, and I, I mean, who knows? Like even today already, we see cases with the banking system and stuff like that. Um, of course, it's used against actual terrorists and threats but it's also used for just normal people look at canada like what happened there like that's scary and and so i totally see this also used and so yes i think it's vital for the bitcoin network and the survival of it that we um do as much mining in homes as possible because that's not something that a government or any entity could take away unless they literally go into every house and take away your miners. And so, and that's not gonna happen. So I think it's something that right now, like, yes, we have all this hype with these really big miners and they're cool and they're stock listed and it brings Bitcoin further and that's great. But I think at one point we need to realize that we're creating now again, a centralized, and a centralized system and that's not what we want. And um, so, yeah, so we need to bring it back. And of course, um, having a miner in everybody's house is definitely something I would like to see. And if we can make it easier with heating your water at the same time, sure, so it is. So that's definitely a, another positive thing um, beside of actually getting paid to shower. Do you see, um, uh, like a lot of the Monero guys say that like ASICs could potentially be regulated and like you would need a permit to even get the specialized hardware to mine um, under these climate laws. And then recently we saw this Greenpeace change the code kind of thing. Um, do you see like ASICs kind of being prohibited from, you know, every home having an ASIC in their water heater? They're trying to make weed illegal and you can buy it at every corner. Like, I, I sure, they will try maybe, but I think humans... They're ingenious, like, then I don't know, like, it's like the size of a shoebox. So maybe you will buy some shoes, <laughs> ASIC shoes. And I, I mean, yes, it could be, but I'm not too worried about that, that people will figure out a way um, to distribute this. I mean, look, like, um, look in Cuba with the, with the, with the distribution of the, of like, of the videos and news articles and stuff with the, with the hard drives that they hand around, like, there's a reason that we've survived as humans that long and that's human ingenuity is part of it. And I think we're gonna find ways around this. Um, I, it, will it happen? I don't know, it's hard to say. I think there is gonna be a game theory at one point that some countries will allow it and some countries will ban it. And the companies that will ban it, uh, the countries that will ban it, they will realize that everybody's leaving. So I, I think eventually, countries will understand that taking away freedoms from their citizens is a bad idea yeah i mean look at how the prohibition in america went right that was a yeah that went, that went fantastic didn't it and also <laughs> there's things like where humans did that whole thing where 
um well, there was, i remember seeing there was this thing where like 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 um like wine companies dehydrate grapes into like a powder or a bar and then it would have on the instructions like do not do this step this step this step this step because yes. it'll turn it into alcohol <laughs> that was yes, the idea not a flamethrower yeah, yeah. <laughs> the idea is you're supposed to turn it into alcohol or like um and then as you said like when it comes to the government coming to people's homes I, I don't know how many people listening will know this but in the uk you have to have a tv license so you have to have a license to watch television okay uh, and it's obviously like a big joke thing because <laughs> like how do they prove because you can have a television but you have to have it plugged in. it's like how can they prove you're actually watching television not just playing a game or whatever so there's basically no way they can prove it and, and the people try you know who try to come into your house to prove it can't come in and there's all these kinds of things so i can imagine any country actually trying to do this outside of like china and very strict communist countries uh, it's just going to be a complete flop um yeah. especially in the us we've got so much land to cover especially compared to the uk where on this tiny little island we can't even do it properly here so do you have one of those sorts? What was that, sorry? I don't, because to be fair, I genuinely don't watch any live television while I'm in my house. I haven't had a TV license ever since I moved out of my parents' house because I actually don't watch live TV. I just watch Netflix, and that's legal. So if the government's listening, fuck you. I'm absolutely fine <laughs> and above board. So, <laughs> um, but, And I'm barely ever in the country anyway, so screw you guys. 